Hello, everyone. This is Carrie Lynn. Welcome to the University of Utopia Talk Show call tonight being the 8th day of June 2011 over here in the States. Uh, and we welcome Frank back this week. Um, and uh, we're glad to have him back. We've got some great topics to cover. And this is a reminder to everyone, uh, we are here for educational purposes. And please don't misconstrue or misunderstand anything that's given out as legal advice. We do not give out legal advice. Uh, everything is for encouragement and educational purposes. So with that, I will turn it over to you, Frank. Oh, thank you, Terry. Uh, welcome, everybody. And thank you to those that are on the call now and those that will be downloading the call later on from either uh, TalkShoe or from University of Eucadia at university.eucadia.info. Uh, it's a lot of subjects tonight I want to talk about, and I think uh, the theme I want to cover tonight I think is an important one given the environment we're in. And it may sound a bit strange for a few folk, but the topic tonight, the theme tonight actually is everything is going to be okay if we use our powers wisely. Everything's going to be okay if we use our powers wisely. And I'm going to use that as a theme to cover some topics that have happened even this week with the massive solar flares, the topic of alanin. I'm going to go some of the incredible research that's coming through on the cognitive law. And I want to cover in a very practical way some of the lessons that are being learnt and some of the improvements that we ultimately need to see reflected in terms of common mistakes that folk are having when they're going to court and just being aware of, of overcoming some of these mistakes to help you and help others who are facing legal issues. But before I get a bit too further, I, I want to extend out my deepest thanks to those that were able to host the call last week, to Greg, to Ron uh, and to Terry. Um, my deepest thanks. If If there is a an example, a practical example of the truth that there are many, many, not just hundreds, but in fact thousands of good people who already know, who already are more than competent to help and to share. It is the fact that you know, when I'm away, the show goes on, the, the, there are many people to help you. And it reinforces the importance of why at the end of this year that it is extremely important that I step out of this role and become more helpful in being a member just like all of you. Because if it continues, then really I am obstructing the many, many good people who are absolutely competent and on top of them. I just want to thank you all for that. Yes, I was away on a move, uh, moving to a new home. And I want to also thank, and it would be remiss of me not to thank, the several dozen of you that took precious money and finances of your own and saw fit to make a donation through to help me and help you, Katie, in the move. I can't thank you enough. Uh, it, it was, I guess, a... Uh, a swallowing of pride to ask for help I mean, because I did need the help. I still need the help, but I did need the help. And I want to thank you all who did that. Um, it was very appreciative. They say moves is a bit like divorce and death. And uh, once you get over it, you can focus back on. But we're in a good spot uh, in a suburb called San Susi, meaning freedom of fear. So we'll be here for, uh, for at least a couple of years. Well, let's get started on this topic, which again may sound a bit odd for a few tonight. This, everything is okay, going to be okay if we just use our powers wisely. Well, as a number of you I'm sure are aware, one of the largest explosions of the sun we've seen for at least five, six, seven, eight years took place yesterday 
Uh, and uh, we were lucky that when the sun did explode out, that the uh, particle uh, rays didn't directly hit the Earth. We we're getting a side swipe, but they didn't directly hit the Earth. If they did, then we probably wouldn't have a call uh, tonight. And I know that we are only just beginning to see some of these events. I know there is uh, enormous change afoot in terms of uh, Elenin. There is absolutely going to be more upheaval in terms of earthquakes. Clearly the melting that's taking place in Antarctica and the Arctic is far, far more accelerated than people are willing to admit. And I think all of us, whether we acknowledge it or not, at least uh, in our own minds, are growing more and more concerned on are we really living in a time that we will see great, great hurt. So I want to cover that um, by saying to you that everything that we've been talking about with Eucadia, that life is a dream, a dream has rules, that if you look at your live-born record produced from 1-heaven.org, you see the words divine immortal spirit. If you've sent out for an ecclesiastical deep poll, you see the words divine immortal spirit, that we can never die, that we have been here more than once. When you look at these things and you hear these words, I know they sound like words, but I, tonight I want to say to you, we have the power to manifest our future. We collectively have the power to manifest our future. And it is time, well and truly time, for us to stop using that awesome power to maintain the existing fear and prison cage by perpetuating that fear, even if we feel we are explaining and exposing and if we even think we're helping others by letting them know how bad things are. In a sense, when we talk about their world, when we talk about the New World Order, when we continue to expose the things they're doing, we are giving energy and framework and structure to them. The sun is a conscious being. The sun could destroy us any second of any day. And it could have done it 20 years ago. It could have uh, done it 10 years ago. But everything in this solar system and everything about our sun points to the undeniable fact that far from the sun having a neutral view of us, the sun goes out of its way to sustain life and not to disrupt our very, very fragile world. Now, it is not as if we have made it easy for the earth and easy for the sun to protect us. We've built cities on major fault lines. We build our cities in major floodplains. We build our homes out of wood. We build our homes above the ground. We pollute the rivers, we poison our water, we poison our bodies, we poison the air. We go out of our way in utter madness to destroy our world. And yet, as we saw yesterday, a massive explosion from the sun did not hit the earth directly. There is signs over and over that as this change takes place, it is part of our change and helping us change and not to destroy us. Everything's going to be okay if we just use our powers wisely. Elenin, I know, is another concern that people have, and I'll cover that in a second. So tonight, I want to go through some of these important issues of change. I want to talk about our incredible powers and the work that is being done on cognitive law and how important cognitive law is going to be. As I said, I want to cover these practical issues of, of the steps of uh, mistakes that we have been making 
and explain and help and share with you uh, pointers to remind ourselves, almost like a checklist, of things not to make mistakes when going to court. And then uh, I want to wrap up with questions in the, in the final hour. So let's talk about Elenin for a moment because we've spoken about the sun. We're talking about Elenin and then I'm going to ask those that are on the call, please, to go and have a look at one-heaven.org. And if you want to, go and have a look at this while we're just talking about Elenin. Go to one-heaven.org and get onto the covenant. The covenant is the, the graphic there you see on that page. Go and have a look at Article 50, Treaty of the Sun. That's Article 50 on the Covenant of One Heaven on one-heaven.org. So have a look while we're just talking about Eleanor. So as you know, one of the big chatters at the moment is, what is Ellen? If Ellen was a comet, then we should expect to see the emergence of a tail. The tail being the hydrogen on the back of a comet, uh, effectively reacting with the rays of the sun, causing the tail to increase the closer it comes to the sun. Then, of course, the sun taking that hydrogen from the back of the comet. Well, so far, we see none of that occurring with Elenin. And we still see a major uh, gap in the media in talking about Elenin. So once again, we see this major disconnect between and a huge amount of chatter on Elenin from some quite, quite respectable, very respectable people in the astrophysics field, and yet no chatter in the public domain about Elenin. So one of the conclusions is that Elenin is in fact the counterweight and uh, missing mass of the solar system, whereas it measured the solar system and there's been missing mass in it, that it is the planet X counterweight that has uh, been undetected until now, coming back in in an abnormal orbit as some uh, clockwork mechanistic uh, frame. Well, one of the things that we've grown up with is a belief that all around us life is that uh, under Darwin we're kind of like a chance or under modern theories this is one of many multiverses and that everything has happened not by reason but by circumstance so that when we look at our solar system the planets are in position uh, because that's how they were put there millions billions of years ago and that this uh, Elenin is coming on a trajectory and will affect us whether we like it or not. Well, you can tell how the ruling elite view these things by what they don't talk about. And it's been said time and time again that, that these people have built their own shelters, that like rats leaving a, a, a ship, that at the, at the moment of peril they will run away. <clears throat> and this is, this is consistent with history. But I see nothing in the story of the sun and its relationship with the earth to suggest that the arrival of Elenin spells our doom. And let me explain why. Yes, it is absolutely true that like a farmer giving the fields a rest, that the very fragile surface of the earth requires rotation relative to our core to prevent the crust itself from breaking apart. Now, if I wanted to use an analogy, if you think of an egg and how fragile the, uh, the egg is, imagine an egg the size of a football field or an egg the size of a bus with the same width that is just how fragile the crust of the earth is. Think of a bus size egg with that fragile skin. It is an incredibly delicate and fragile structure. Now, if you take Hollywood's version of events and take the movie 2012, then they regard the events somewhere like the sun heating the core of the earth like a microwave 